Um, I'm sitting on Camilo, that's my youngest team member. That's the newest horse I have. He is a Lusitano stallion and a half brother to Archimedes, whom I have had for a little longer. Today we are not here for the Festival of Riding show. It says the first time such a big show is on Wednesday night. Are you excited? Yes, I'm too. I'm totally excited. I'm always excited before a show and before this one, especially because we have quite a lot of numbers and a lot of changes in the background, all of which have to work fast for us to do all of this. And I'm very, very excited. What can you look forward to? How would you explain your job to someone who has no idea what you're doing? So I am very versatile. So everything that is related to horses, have I actually done it somehow before or do I like to do it and have I tried it before? There are a few things that I can of course delve into a little more or where you can say, okay, that's my main discipline. And I would now say it's actually freedom dressage coupled with the Spanish riding style. That's what I am, my centerpiece, so to speak. And tonight we will show various different lessons, i.e. different riding styles. Once the Spanish garrocha riding style together with a fire number, then once something very classic, old, namely the ladies saddle and um, which is very, very nice, which is why it's also solo and is not done so often anymore. And um, I want to do a little more, a little more fan drift, then we'll do a freedom dressage together, my friend and I, that's also a core number because it's still under construction. And we are showing them to the current state and the degree of difficulty is very high because almost all of them are stallions with whom we work. And yes, we just have to make sure that they all stay focused, yes. Yes, I was just wondering that a little bit. Stallions, that's a lot of temperament. And I mean, what you're doing is not completely harmless. How did you decide why no mares? For example, this was actually parallel with my boyfriend and me. So I've always had this one. You can put yourself in there a little bit. Black Beauty, the black stallion and so on. It's such a childhood dream to have a stallion like that. A black, beautiful horse with a flowing mane. I think every child has dreamed of this at some point and I just find the expression um, in stallions very special and when they go into the show and present themselves like that it just has a different effect like if it's a mare or a gelding and of course I also have geldings and I also really like to work with them and you have even more of this this friendships this playful it's still you see that a little more and with the stallions um, if you have very, very clear rules, of course, you have to have them with the others too, but with the stallion, everything is timed a little more sharply. Um, also where you position them. And it is a very high demand for yourself to manage that with stallions. But in the wild, there are several stallions in a herd and understand there is not only one light stallion and in the wild, there is no overlap either. So they have to somehow arrange and understand each other. So I made it a bit of a task with my friend at the same time. Try it with the stallions. Of course, we have both brainstormed as long as we can, and we try to do that too. Yes, we also know the risks, and of course, try to prepare ourselves to adjust to them. That's something that you should do as professionals. You shouldn't just leave stallions together like that. We didn't either. You are always the boss. The suffering here and the others are there, and everyone has his place, and there are very, very clear rules where the horses stick to it. You can and where you feel safe. Yes, you don't just do shows. You have now participated in films. You do seminars. What is that where you would say, okay, that's actually what I like to continue doing the most, or can you decide? So I'm actually, I like to do a mix of, all in all, I'm not someone who can always unwind one so sporadically. I always really like, for example, I took part in my Cavallino show for a while. That was also really great, but I like to do the mix if I only did that now. The Mer show, I would at some point say I would get tired of it and my horses. Um, so also a little bit of all this uh, where it is always, always, always linguistically the same or is always continuously the same. You start to express yourself a little less and I always like to have this spark ready or a little bit of this, this animation to say, okay, what are we doing now? 
to explore something new. So new tasks, again, that also challenge you and take you further. So I think films are great if they are great tasks and it's always great fun to work with the film team. I think films. Accidents and shows are great. Doing various shows and doing the workouts and also the courses, there is a healthy mix on it. So I can't decide on one. This is really a mix. Do you see it? There are 1,000, 1,000 things that can go wrong. Do you also have fears if you are in good structure? I think it's called manners. I don't know, depending on whether you are in the circus or riding. Do you have fears right now when you stand there or do you really let them fall? So we know the risks from a certain point. So when you start doing this professionally, then you are aware of the risks that the whole thing brings with it. But in order to deliver a good show or to stand up for a film, you also have to have a certain, um, simply a certain positive attitude and simply have faith in yourself and in the horses. And from a certain point on, especially in freedom is like that. You have to give up and you have to learn that. You just have to, I say, keep all your emotions and everything neutral and just take a quick breath come to you and go in and just let the whole thing run. This is actually a bit easy to let go. What is so special about working with horses? Why did you choose this path? Horses are very honest animals and very majestic animals, um, very sensitive animals, but they are also very, very direct. And uh, they also teach us a lot of people. So with a horse, just in the way we work, just in groundwork or in freedom dressage, you have to be very, very fair. You have to get everything. Think carefully about finding a logical process. You have to communicate clearly. In today's world, very little is communicated clearly. A lot is somehow said behind the scenes or something is said, but what is meant differently, I have the feeling that among people, there is little body language and little clear and little honest communication and the horses keep bringing you back. Come back and show you what's right. You can't grin at me, but have a horror inside that doesn't work. Horses know when you're scared. Horses know when you are not well. The horses notice your emotions. That means you have to communicate honestly with them. And if that doesn't work, those are the moments that are difficult. If something doesn't work, you have to be honest about it. You have to stand by it. If it doesn't work, then you have to look for something else. That is, find a solution for things that don't work. And that is actually something that will move you forward in your whole life with all sorts of other situations too. And that is a learning effect that I get with horses through horse keeping. And maybe a little sneak peek, is there a moment that you're particularly excited about today where you think, oh, if the audience sees this, this is going to look really cool. So I think there are a lot of little moments in the number where my boyfriend and I are together. And I think at the end, I think it's a very nice moment when all the horses come in together, our horses turn and the last two horses gallop in almost freely and find their place in the earth. And I think that's a little wow effect where we worked a lot for. And yes, I'm very happy about that. Okay, plenty. Thank you very much. <laughs>